Hello, this is just a small explanation as to how we can use the limit notation to understand some of the asymptotes that we discussed in class. First, let's look at the horizontal asymptotes in here. So I just grabbed one of the examples that we discussed in class, and we want to see how can we analyze the vertical and horizontal asymptote using uh, the limit notation. Well, just like we discussed in class, the first thing that you want to do is perhaps simplify the expression. And you will notice that we can rewrite this function by factoring. So if we factor this completely, you will see that the numerator can be factored out as x minus 2 times 2x two minus 1. And the denominator can be factored out as x minus 2 and 2x plus 3. Notice that the factors of x minus 2 cancel out. And now we have the expression of 2x minus 1 divided by 2x plus 3. Okay, you notice that this expression you cannot factor out any further. So this is the expression that we're going to be analyzing uh, in terms of when, we, when we're going to be looking at vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Now, the first thing that you will notice is that we do encounter a removable discontinuity. Notice that when we were simplifying, the factor of x minus 2 was canceled out. So it's not a vertical asymptote anymore. It becomes removal discontinuity. And we do have a removal discontinuity at x equals 2. So we got that out of the way. Now, for the vertical asymptotes, let me raise this. For the vertical asymptote, just like we discussed in class, the vertical asymptote is the value that will make your denominator equivalent to zero. So let's just work it out real quick. Okay, so after doing some algebra, we encounter that the vertical asymptote happens at the value of x um, equals negative three over two. And for the horizontal asymptote, now, remember that for the horizontal, the horizontal asymptote, we have to look at the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. So after simplifying, you will see that the degree of the numerator, it's equivalent to the degree of the denominator. So when that happens, our vertical asymptote is nothing more than the leading coefficient of the top divided by the leading coefficient of the bottom, which if we simplify this, you will see that we have a vertical asymptote at just y. Well, let me just write it this way. At just y equals 1. Okay, so this is what we have been discussing in class. Now, we know that we have a vertical asymptote at uh, x equals negative 3 halves, and we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. And we also saw that we have a removal discontinuity at x equals 2. So if we graph this, we would obtain the following. So notice that this is the graph that we would obtain if we graph the following function, just like we did in class. We got a vertical asymptote at negative 3 halves, and we got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Now, how can we use the limit notation to still represent some kind of a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote? Now, notice that for limit, this is, this, this is what the main lesson of, of this video is about. We want to see, well, let's start with the vertical asymptote. So notice that we do have a vertical asymptote at negative 3 halves. So we want to see what happens to the function as it's approaching negative 3 halves. And the way that we're going to write that down is we want to find the limit as x is approaching negative 3 halves of f of x. But now, remember that we have to approach it from both sides of the function. And notice that in order for us to say that we're going to be approaching from the left, we're going to do a little, bit, a little negative here. And we also want to see what happens to this function as we approach it from the right-hand side. Uh, I think that's an extra parenthesis, so let me get this out of the way. Oops, now let me just erase the whole thing. Okay. Okay, so this is essentially what we want to see. We want to see what's happening to the function as we approach the function 
to the value negative three halves from the left hand side. And what happens to the value of the function as we approach negative three halves from the right hand side. So the blue is the function that we have here. So notice that we want to see what happens to the function as we approach that value. So notice that if we come in from the left hand side and just follow right here, follow my pen. Notice that if we come in from the left hand side, notice that if we come in from the left hand side, as we're getting closer and closer to negative three halves, take a look at what the fact, what, what's happening to the y values of your function. Notice that as we're getting closer and closer, as we're getting closer and closer to negative three halves, the values of y keep increasing and increasing in value. So what this is going to tell us is that if we are approaching the function on the value negative three halves from the left hand side, you will see that your function is just increasing just like we discussed previously. So the way that we're going to represent that is that the limit of the function as x it's approaching negative three halves from the left hand side, it's positive infinity. Because notice that if we're coming from the left hand side, it's approaching positive infinity. But now if we approach that same value, negative three halves, but now if we approach it from the right hand side, notice that now we're coming from the right, going towards the left. So if we're approaching it from the right hand side, so notice that we're, we're getting closer and closer to negative three halves, but now we're approaching it from the right hand side. Take a look at what's happening to your y values. Now they're not going to positive infinity because as we're getting closer and closer, your y values keep decreasing, decreasing. So now the way that we're going to represent this is the limit of the function as x is approaching negative three here, three halves from the right hand side. This is negative infinity. So notice that from the left hand side, we approach positive infinity and from the right hand side, we approach negative infinity. When this situation happens, when you are approaching the same value, but if on one of the sides, you get positive infinity and when you approach them from the different direction, you approach negative infinity. This is how we can represent a vertical asymptote as well. Vertical asymptote at X equals negative three halves because as we approach from the left hand side, uh, we go to positive infinity and from right, we go to negative infinity. So notice that we do encounter a vertical asymptote. If, if you're coming from one side, well, from one side of the function, you approach positive infinity and still under that same value. If you approach it from a different direction, you go to negative infinity. And this is also the opposite. As long as one of the direction goes to one infinity and the other direction goes to the opposite side of the infinity, then that's how we can properly identify a vertical asymptote using limit notation. There's one more asymptote that we have to discuss here, and that is slant, slant asymptote. And just like we discussed in class, we can identify that we do have a slant asymptote in, under this expression, because notice that the degree of the numerator is one greater than the degree of the denominator. And just like we discussed in class, what we can do we can gonna, we're going to try to rewrite the function f of x. So the way that we're going to be approaching this problem is by either doing long division or synthetic division. I'm going to do long division, which is fine. Let me set this up. Okay, so if we set this up, notice that we do need an x. Um, x times x squared. I'm sorry, x and x, that's x squared. I'm going to switch the sign, negative 1x plus x. Now, mm, mm, mm. notice that they do cancel out as well. So now we got negative two. And notice that x, there's no expression that you can multiply by in order for you to get negative two. Uh, I mean, we're just dealing with positive exponents. So notice that this is your remainder. We do have a remainder. We 
we do have a remainder at negative 2. So that means that we can go back to the function and now we can rewrite f of x as x uh, 2 minus 1. Okay, so x take away 2 divided by x minus 1. This is this is just how we can rewrite a function. Okay. So let's take a look at what we have now. Um, so we agree that we have this function and we were able to rewrite it this way. So now the way that we're going to be identify this land asymptote is by seeing what happens to the function. We want to see us, we want to see what happens to the function as x is approaching positive or negative infinity. So we want to see as to what happens to f of x as x is going to either positive infinity or negative infinity. Uh, I guess that's an and statement, not an or. So what happens to f of x as x is approaching positive infinity n as x is approaching negative infinity? Cool. All right. The way that we're going to be analyzing this is we're just going to, we don't we don't really have to see what happens to the full, full function itself. What we want to just see is what, take a look at what happens to the remainder term, which this is the remainder term. What happens to this term as x, it's going to positive infinity. What happens to this term as x, it's approaching positive infinity. Well, let's take a look. Um, so we want to see as what happens to negative 2 as x is going to positive infinity. Well, take a look at what this really means. This means take a look at what happens to this expression as x is getting infinitely larger. Well, notice that if x is getting infinitely larger, then your denominator gets infinitely larger as well. Now, if you have a denominator that is getting infinitely larger, notice that your whole fraction itself is going to go towards zero because you're going to keep dividing by a larger number. And if you keep dividing by a larger number, then the whole fraction itself goes to zero. And the same can be said if... The same can be said if x gets to negative infinity. It is the same idea. It's just we're still doing the same thing. We're approaching, we're, we're, we're dividing by a larger and larger number. It doesn't matter the sign. We're dividing by a larger and larger number. And if you keep dividing by a larger and larger number, then the whole term itself will go to zero. So now we have seen that if x is approaching positive infinity, then the remainder term kind of disappears. Because that's what we mean by this, by approaching it to zero. So the way that we can see the slant asymptote the slant asymptote is just the remainder or the term that pretty much does not go to zero. Which in this case the slant asymptote for the function f of x is nothing more than y equals to x. And the reason behind it is because, so the slant asymptote, we agree that is y equals x. And this is because as x goes to infinity, the remainder goes to zero. Which we can represent it this way. As the, we want to see what happens to the function as x negative one. So here it is. This is how we can express, or this is how we can un try to understand the, re the, the slant asymptote using limit notation. And notice that this is exactly what, we ha what I had here as a graph. Um, you can you can obtain the shape of the graph using graphing calculator, and notice that I mean 
we didn't really analyze the, the vertical asymptote, but you will see here that you do have a vertical asymptote at x equals one, but this is your slant asymptote. This is your slant asymptote here. And the reason why we were, were able to define the slant asymptote is because of this idea here. As x gets so large, you will see your denominator is getting large as well, which implies that the whole remainder term goes to zero.